and also the Benjamin Carson story. So. Yeah, you're part of those who are influenced <laughs> by Ben Carson. Yes. That's good. Hi. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. All right. Can you kindly introduce yourself, your name, your school, and your level? Okay, my name is Obomide Freedom Got Evidence, and I am a final year medical student from the University of Abuja. Okay, what inspired you to pursue a career in medicine? Okay, um, pursuing a career in medicine was born out of purpose. Um, I am someone that does not like people. I'm someone that doesn't like people to be in distressing situations and I will try as much as possible to ensure that they are not in that distressing situation, whatever it may be, in any aspect of life. So for me, that was one of the things that um, inspired me to do medicine and also the Benjamin Carson story. So. Yeah, you're part of those who are influenced <laughs> by Ben Carson. Yes. That's good. How has medical school been for you so far? Okay. Um, Medical school has been quite an interesting journey. It has been an amazing journey, although not without its fair share of challenges. I have had my successes in medical school and I have also had um, failures. So <laughs> um, it has been quite an interesting journey. I've met very interesting teachers who have inspired me and impacted on me and um, given me kind of a prototype to follow for the rest of my career. And also, I have met interesting friends, um, lifelong relationships that I hope to keep for the rest of my life. So, medical school has been quite an interesting journey. Okay. Um, it's common knowledge that medical school is demanding. How do you maintain a work life balance or school life balance? And what self care practices have helped you to stay resilient? Okay. Um, the truth is, medical school is very demanding. I don't think any medical student that will tell you that medical school is not demanding. Um, for me, um, one of the challenges have been um, maintaining. One of the challenges have been um, combining medicine with other aspects of life, other things that I love to do. Because I'm not someone who is just medicine alone. I the other things that have actually caught my interest. So um, for me, I would not say this any such a thing as balance but for me it has been priority setting my priorities right um as one of my mentors or like the room with a pastor Mildred, i should say she will say um attend to the glass balls first so there are glass balls per seasons of your life so you, i have asked, asked myself what is important at this particular season of my life and there are times when in the midst of the other things i do apart from medicine um, there are times when academics have to take preeminence, have to be like what I am just focused on for that season. And then, um, so that would help me to maintain a healthy work life balance. And then, um, self care practices I have had to put in place. Um, I try to sleep as much as I can when I have to sleep. I try not to um, let, I try not to engage myself in things I'm going to puts me in very uncomfortable situations because to excel academically you have to be um okay emotionally you have to be okay physically you have to be okay health-wise you have to be okay spiritually so i try to ensure that every of those part of my life are in check and i'm not in situations that are going strongly off balance and then um i love to have very um intelligent conversations with like mine so for me that's a self-care habit listening to sermons listening to music and um, spending time alone with myself, probably just reading a book. Okay. Yeah. What kind of extracurricular activities have you engaged in in your journey so far? Just one or two. Okay, um, apart from medicine, I am very much involved in CMD, that's Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, where I've been taught so much about leadership and spirituality. And then, um, yeah, I love to paint and I love to write, so okay. like extracurricular activities. That's interesting. What do you have to say to the young chap who is considering studying medicine at the moment? Okay, I would like to say they should know their reason why and hold very firmly to their why because it's your why that keeps you going. It's your why that um, motivates you. Um, there will be times in medical school where you have to ask yourself who sent me. I mean, you'll be so 
Uh, not everybody do, but there are times when I've been so frustrated and it was my why that keeps me that kept me going. So I would say they should know their why, the reason why they got into medical school. And then there are some people who um, probably if their parents are say, okay, go do medicine. So even if that's your case, um, still try to find your why that's going to um, keep you moving throughout medical school. What's the advice you have to that student who is about to begin his or her pre-training career? Okay, um, I would say you should give your pre-clinical years your all academically because that's the foundation and that's, that's, it's just like laying the foundation for whatever you're going to do in your medical career and if the foundation is faulty, um, I would say you probably have a very turbulent career so um, put your all in your academics. There will definitely be time to do other extra things so your academics record first in your pre-clinical years. What's your advice to that student who is about to begin his or her clinical year? Okay, um, I would say that you should learn adaptability because the way you would study as a preclinical student is entirely different from the way you study as a clinical student. In clinicals, there is, it's not just going to classes and attending lectures or, pra or doing practicals. In clinical arm, um, there's world rounds, there's theatre, there's tutorials, there are so many other things. And then you also say, um, apply your hands, do the hands on, don't shy away from the skills you're supposed to learn. Try as much as possible to make yourself available. Don't be in hostel when your mates are in hospital for calls and other activities apart from lectures. What should influence a medical student's choice of textbooks slash materials while in school? <sighs> okay. I would say know yourself and know what works for you as a person. Know um, your study habits, your study patterns. Um, if you're able to know yourself and know what works for you, I think you should be able to know the materials that work for you. What kind of friends and associates are ideal as one goes through medical school? Hmm, friends are ideal. I, I would say find, um, find your tribe. Find people of similar values, similar core values, and that's because um, throughout your medical journey, you need people that will keep you in check. You need people that will keep you accountable. You would need people that share similar values. And so, um, you, I don't think you should have friends that when you are studying, they want to go for parties, or they are pulling you to go for parties, or one social event or the other. I'm not saying social events are bad, but. Um, Keep people that share core values so that you'll be able to get motivated when um, you're losing interest. People that are going to hold your hand when you get tough. People that are going to pray with you. Keep people that are going to speak into your life. Um, healthy voices. What are the most important traits someone needs to thrive in medical school? Three most important traits. Okay, uh, I would say diligence, number one. Um, I would say... Um, Diligence, persistence, um, grit. So yeah, that's it's synonymous with like three Ds: diligence, determination, and dedication. Yes. So dedication is like persistence, yes. and then grit is like determination. Yes. So that was spot on. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced in preparing for medical school? That's through the journey to up to now, and how did you navigate them? Maybe two of them. Okay, um, I had a bit of difficulty getting to medical school, not because my dance for my white results were not good, but I applied to a school and they didn't give me, so I was thinking of writing down the game, and so it was a very trying time for me. So um, I was able to transfer to this school, no, not transfer, I was able to get admission to this school, mm -hmm. but then I was not able to get medicine still. Um, I was able to get veterinary medicine and I didn't want that, like, for me, that was just not in line with my purpose. So I was still praying and asking God that this and everything. So eventually, I was able to change to medicine after the results. After like the semester had gone quite, I was able to change. And it was a whole lot going from one lecturer's office to another. And I've changed this now, my new matric number. Some of them were friendly, some of them were just not. Yeah. So that was quite a lot. And then, so. That was it, preparing, preparing into medical school. What changes would you like to see in the medical education system? Okay, um, 
the changes I would love to see in mental ed education system. I will really wish that um, students are being med medical students are being exposed to patients early on in even right from their preclinical years, and that's because it will enable them to appreciate to a great deal what medicine is all about and to help them like really know um really have an idea of what they ought to do in medicine and also i would also love to see more evidence-based learning more tax-based learning more problem-based learning and i wish um students are being prepared or prepped into re doing research early on from medical school What's the most impactful lesson you've learned from a lecturer that has shaped your approach to medicine? Okay, um, that's um, Professor Anuma, that's um, Professor Felicia Anuma, consultant endocrinologist. She will say that you have to be dedicated to get the right knowledge. You will need to um, be able to attend to your patient properly. She will say, I don't see any reason why a medical student should miss class because what if they miss class? That's it that you have been taught what you used to save the life of a patient. So she's always for excellence, she's always for diligence, she's always for doing your best as a medical student because she will say, um, if a patient dies in your hands because, not because of you did your best, but because of you were deficient of knowledge, God is going to require that soul from your hand. So that was a very um, valuable lesson I've learned from all of my lecturers. Okay. What role has spirituality played in your medical training? Okay, um, I don't think, I don't know how people do medical school without God because uh, <laughs> for me, um, and the Holy Spirit has been my great help through medical school. Um, there were times when I was so discouraged, um, times when I faced setback, he was holding my hand through and there were certain exams when I got to examination hall and I just went blank and it was just me and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. If I failed this exam, it means you have failed. <laughs> so, I mean, and those times he came through. So um, spirituality has played a great deal for me as a medical student. Um, God has really been there holding my hand also. Okay. How do you envision emerging technologies like artificial intelligence or telemedicine? And how are you preparing for these changes in the future? Okay. Um, I would say um, artificial intelligence is like the new gold now. Um, everybody's saying take, 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 take. And um, artificial intelligence has helped a great deal with um, getting animals database for in the health sector. And I think in future that's going to help a great deal because clinicians will be able to um, have um, great animals information about disease conditions. They'll be able to make um, better clinical diagnosis, better clinical decisions and know how best to um, and know how best to treat their patients. So yeah. And preparing for um, preparing for that, I would say I'm advising myself and I'm also advising the medical students that you should be um, you should be in sync or you should I don't know the word right or see but you should um, you should get to find out the, the latest trends um, in artificial intelligence. Don't just say, oh, I'm a medical student and that's not my business. Get to find out what's going on because um, if we if we, we if we don't pick interest in these things, eventually people in technology are going to pick these things and they'll be the ones employing us where we should be the ones employing them. So, yeah, we should that's, get ourselves informed. That's very profound. What role does mentorship have to play in medical school? <sighs> okay, uh, mentorship has a very great role to play in medical school because um, as medical students sometimes we're very confused we don't really know our way around things and I believe that for you to be able to be proficient or be excellent in whatever you do you have to have people that um, keep you accountable people that have gone through that path that you want to go people that be excellent in that path so Mentorship has, for me personally, mentorship has played a great role in ensuring that I I do what I'm supposed to do part time. That's helped in guiding me academically and helping excellence. Okay. Can you tell us about a mentor who has significantly impacted your journey and how their guidance has influenced your approach to medicine? 
Okay, um, inside of lectures, I'll still say is um, Professor Felicia Anuma. We don't have a direct mentor mentee relationship, but watching her in clinic, watching her in ward rounds, do her thing, how she's commanding excellence has motivated me to um, be at my best, best, very best that I can do and help me to keep pushing. And then another key mentor that has helped me is you. Um, <laughs> okay, I didn't see that coming. Okay. <laughs> because um, I, I, we met at a point in my academic journey where I really needed that guidance. And so far, you've played a very key role in shaping how my academic journey has gone and opening my eyes to the things I have not seen before as pertaining mm -hmm. to academic excellence. So I'm grateful. Thank Aww, you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Finally, do you think it's worth it? I mean, medical school. And what do you have to say to other medical students out there? Okay, I would, I would say medical school is worth it. For me, it has been worth it. Um, it's not all rosy, um, it's not challenge free, but the journey has been worth it because I believe that um, if you do medicine, you can do anything, you can be anything you want to be. Uh, you don't necessarily have to practice, but there's this um, grit, resilience, determination, competence, intentionality that medicine instills in you, which I don't think or it's rare to find anywhere else. So I'm not saying it's not anywhere else, but it's rare to find anywhere else. So uh, I would say medicine is worth it. Not for the money, because I mean, there's no money in medicine. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Impacting, influencing medicine is worth it. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Freedom. In a few months, officially. Um, we are wishing you success <laughs> and you. all the grace that you would need Thank to work this much. final part. It's been my utmost delight hosting you on the channel today and Thank we you. hope to see you again in a couple of years you know down the line and <laughs> you shared you. very profound insights and you know deep thoughts that i believe those who are watching would have to meditate and ponder upon it's been my pleasure thank you Same very here. much thank you